But let's talk a little bit about code as far as roofing processes. So I'm going to dump, jump right into the code book here, the code reference. And so the first thing we talked about in sequence was sheeting, right? We talked about how you can't um, put on new shingles unless uh, you have a solid sheath deck. And so that's right here. So sheathing requirements. So I've only pulled the code for asphalt shingles uh, on this particular part. I touch a little bit on metal paneling because I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, most anything that's a shingle that's going to involve nails, it's going to require a solid sheath deck. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have room or a spot to put those nails and know that you're going to hit wood. But this is just the comp. This is it right here. It just says asphalt shingles shall be fastened to solid sheet deck. So that's right there. Talks about the requirement for if you tear off your roof and you have a skip deck, you're going to have to resheet it. Uh, it's going to have to be solid before you put your underlayment down. So then we can also now jump right back into this and we will talk about underlayment. So we've got the roof sheath. Now we got to put our underlayment down. So that'd be our felt and our ice and water shield if we live in colder climates. And so we can talk just everybody kind of knows that you need to put felt down. So I don't need to dive into that. You're going to put 15 or 30 pound felt down. Um, but let's talk about ice and water barrier. So right here is ice barrier. And they have it in here. I've never seen anybody do it. But you can um, take two layers of underlayment and cement them together. Or you use the self-adhering polymer modified vitamin sheath. <laughs> That's the long word for ice and water barrier. So most all people use ice and water barrier. It's got a sticky back on it. It's going to stick right to the wood. You don't want to stick it to old existing felt. You want to stick it to the wood. And here's where it talks about um, extend. Oh, so the normal underlayment and extend from the lowest edges of all roof surfaces. So that'd be the lowest edge, which would be like your eave. That'd be where your fascia board is. It'd be where your drip edge is. You can install your drip edge. And it would uh, lower edges of the surfaces that point not less than 24 inches inside the exterior wall line of the building. So that's on the first video. I kind of showed you a picture. Um, you're going to measure in 24 inches in a horizontal plane. So if I'm standing on the ground, I take a tape and I go to a corner of a house and I pull 24 inches. And I look up in a straight line from that point at the roof all the way to the to the edge of your, your roof edge. That's where you need ice and water shield. Keep in mind any roof cover, extended roof entries. Maybe you have a big roof cover over your front entry or your back door. You're going to need more of it because you've got to get to that 24 inches inside the exterior wall. A lot of times, uh, even roofers. They'll be like, oh, I only need one layer of ice and water. Oh, I only need two layers of ice and water. So they just go put it around the whole house. And then they call me out. And I'm like, well, hey, you know, you forgot about this front entryway here. It like sticks out pretty far. You're going to need another couple layers. So I have to tear it off, put up, put some ice and water on. It's not the end of the world, but we want to make sure to keep people running and, and, and save you and roofers or whoever's doing the work money to be able to do it right the first time. I mean, that's the ultimate goal is to have a good solid product and save yourself time and money. Let's jump into metal panel roofing a little bit. So the installation of metal roof panel shall comply with the provisions of this section. Metal roof panel roof covering shall be applied to a solid or space sheathing, except where the roof covering is specifically designed to be applied to space supports. So we just talked a little bit about you have to have a solid sheet deck, right? I mean, any, any type of shingle for the most part is going to need it. Well, if you have a metal panel, you can dictate where those screws go. A lot of times guys will pre pre drill pilot holes where their screws are going to go with the, with all of the metal on the ground. They'll measure where everything is at. They'll set it up there and they've already got their screws. They just go pop their screws in the holes because you can dictate where those screws go because you're not dealing with a small space of a shingle then you can get away with um, a skip deck. Maybe you've tore your house off and you have skip deck on there and you're like, I don't want to sheet it. It's too much money. Uh, look at a metal metal panel roof, not a, not a metal shingle roof, but a metal panel roof. Look at the installation instructions. And you might be good to go. You could just go up there and throw some felt, throw some ice and water down over the skip deck, put your metal panel down and, and you're good to go. 
And um, so let's let's dive into venting right now. Let's talk about just venting in general. So hop over here. So ventilation, enclosed attics and enclosed rafter spaces formed where ceilings are applied directly to the underside of the roof rafters shall have cross ventilation for each separate space by ventilating openings protected against the entrance of rain or snow. So in general, any attic space that you have that's unheated, right? So it's, well, we're not talking about a bonus room. I mean, a bonus room that's up in the attic, that's a living space. You go up there, it's heated. We're talking about attic spaces that are unheated. They need to be vented. So somehow, some way you got to get some can vents. You got to have some soffit venting and some ridge vent or something like that. And um, I spoke a little bit about in the first video about the importance of knowing if you're putting a ridge vent on that you install it per your manufacturer's installation instructions. Um, you want to make sure that um, you have soffit venting if it's required. If you're putting on metal panel, well, you're not going to put can vents up there. You're not going to cut holes in your metal. So you'll end up putting like a ridge cap on and you'll probably have a ridge vent it's a good idea to put some soffit venting in if you can do it. If you've got room, you can drill some little holes and put some uh, like some mesh vents up there and uh, and then have good ventilation. Because the last thing that you really want is moisture getting up there, mold, uh, rotting, deterioration, any of that stuff. You want to keep air moving through there. You don't want any stagnant air in there. Um, when you hop over to like a shingle or like asphalt or or something like that, you can put can vents up across the ridge and you can, you know, if you had the right kind, you can put can vents down low. You can add soffit venting in there. You just want to make sure you have enough. So here's the code. Uh, minimum vent area. The minimum net free ventilation venting area shall be a 1 to 150 of area of the vented space. So in a nutshell, if you had a 600 square foot house, 600 square foot attic, Divide that by 150, that's four. So then you need four square feet of venting. And that is, a, and it doesn't specifically tell you where, right? It's just saying you need four square feet. So maybe you got a couple of gable end vents that equal two, two square feet. And so then you're gonna add two more square feet at the ridge with some cans, or you put a ridge vent in or something like that. If you put a ridge vent in, then you're probably adding a little soffit vent. And so you're gonna get there, right? Now I know 600 square foot is pretty, pretty um, pretty small, but it, you can see what I mean. Just whatever your square foot is, you can figure it all out and figure out how much square feet you need. If you put in can vents, just make sure you look at the can vent and see how many square feet it has so you know how many you need. And then if you're doing a ridge vent, right, you're gonna, the, the strips may already be cut in right at the ridge where they've taken the sheeting off. Uh, just, you know, run your numbers and make sure that you have your cuts big enough and you're getting the square footage that you need. Now there is an exception to the code, and this is the exception right here. The minimum net free ventilation area shall be one to 300 of the vented space provided that both of the following conditions are met. So you must be in a climate zone six, seven, or eight, and have a class one or two vapor retarder is installed on the warm in winter side of the ceiling. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. When someone does a re-roof, we don't know if they've got class one or class two vapor retarder installed on the warm side they're tearing it off and putting a new one on so we have to believe you know based on what people tell us that there is one or isn't one as an inspector i'm perfectly honest i've never looked for this vapor retarder um, in our particular area we live in a colder climate um, but we allow people to vent at a one to three hundred rate if they have soffit venting and that is really what the second part is down here. Not less than 40% and not more than 50% of the required ventilating area is provided by ventilators located in the upper portion of the attic or rafter space. So what they're saying is, is you have to split it in half. So if you, um, if you already have soffit venting, right, you've got strip uh, vents, maybe you've got um, you know, little circle vents or something cut in along the bottom, then that means that you can now vent your house to a one to 300 ratio, which 
you know, is great. And that's half the venting that you have to put up. And if you already have soft vent, well then, you know, a ridge vent for aesthetic purposes, maybe you don't want the can vents up there, kind of a no brainer. You can put them in. It's no big deal. So um, I'll make sure that I put the climate zone picture in the code here below. Hopefully it'll be, uh, I can try to make it um, so it's visual and you can see. But again, as an inspector, if I, if I show up and they've, and they've got soffit vents in there, I'm going to let them put, um, I'm going to let them do it at a one to 300 ratio. I mean, it never hurts to have more venting, but as a roofer, they're up there. They want to make sure they've got enough. Um, one to 300 is okay if they have that soffit venting in there. Let's talk about re-roofing a little bit. Maybe you've got asphalt shingles. Um, maybe you've got um, metal roofing. Maybe you, I, whatever you have going on you are you found out that you only have one existing layer which most of the time is only going to be in like an asphalt shingle type situation you know like clay roofs um you know you're not going to have multiple layers of clay roofs even with metal you're not going to have multiple layers of metal you might end up with a wood shake or like a cedar shake type situation i've seen this a lot where the old original roof is a cedar shakes and then they've put like three layers of roof on it. There might be a three tab on it. And then there's another layer of asphalt shingles on it. Maybe there's three layers on it. And so as a roofer, because there's more than one existing layer, they have to tear it all off. So they have to go down to the skip deck or the sheeting and then take it from there. Just start all over. Now, if there's just one layer, um, we'll show up, we'll peel a couple of, uh, um, peel some shingles, we'll cut through the underlayment, and make sure we can see wood deck. I've had instances where I've had people call me out and they're like, hey, well, we're getting ready to roof this, we're gonna do a layover, will you come over and just verify the single layer? So I show up there, we crawl up on the roof, we peel a couple areas and we peel a spot and we get to the black underlayment, right? The felt, and I say, okay, let's cut that and let's see the wood below. So they cut it, oh, there's another layer on there. Now they have two existing layers. They didn't know it. They just peeled it up and saw felt and thought they were good to go. So when you're doing it, make sure you cut all the way to the wood because I've showed up and I'm like, guys, I, you got to tear it off. If you're going to roof it, you got to tear it all off and you got to resheet it because you have more than one existing layer. If you do have one layer though, and the, and it's not waterlogged, it's clean. Maybe it's got a little moss on it that you can, you know, sweep off and clean off, maybe pressure wash it or something you can go right over the top of it with another layer. So you can have up to two layers after the new layer is on. So one existing layer, you put another layer on and you're good to go. That's a great way to save on sheeting. It's a great way to save on tear off costs, um, having to take all the old stuff to the dump, paying dump fees. Um, the roofers obviously are a lot faster because they show up, put it on. So it's a great way to save some money and get yourself a new roof if, um, if you need one. So let's see what the code shows on this. So roof recover not allowed. A roof recover shall not be permitted where any of the following conditions are met. So where the existing roof or roof covering is water soaked. So that's kind of what I talked about. If it's just like waterlogged, it's, it's not going to work. It says where the existing roof covering is slate clay cement or asbestos cement tile. So those would be the ones that would have to come off you would not be able to lay over over the top of that. It's just not an option. And then here's where it says where the existing roof has two or more applications of any type of roof covering. So like I said, if you have two layers or more, you gotta tear it off and, uh, and, start, and start from scratch. So that should kind of cover the code side of roofing for the most part. I hope this gets you through, get your roof looking nice and pretty and sealed so that you have a dry winter.